Welcome to example program. In this video, we will see how we can write a C program to find the factorial of a number using the recursive approach. I have already made a video where you can find the factorial of a number using the iterative process. I'm going to put the link in the description box. If you want, you can check that out. So here factorial of a non-negative integer, let's say n and uh, we denote it by using this symbol and we call it as n factorial is the multiplication of all integers smaller than or equal to n, which is nothing but n factorial equal to n multiplied by n minus one multiplied by n minus two. And similarly, we go up to uh, three, two, one. So let's say if we want to find the factorial of the number four, then four factorial equal to four multiplied by three multiplied by two multiplied by one. Now, if you look at this closely, then four factorial is actually equal to four multiplied by three factorial. And this three factorial is actually equal to three multiplied by two factorial. And this two factorial is actually equal to two multiplied by one factorial. So here we can see that we can write it like this. And one more thing you have to remember, and that is zero factorial is equal to one. Now let us see how we can write the C program to find the factorial using the recursive function. A function is said to be a recursive function if it calls itself indirectly or directly. Now here in our program, what we're going to do is we're going to create a function and uh, we will call it as factorial, we can give any name and the return value will be of type integer. It will return an integer value, which will be the factorial value here. Since we are taking integer type, the number that we're going to enter for finding the factorial has to be a smaller number. Integer data type can hold uh, a particular range of values. So once we go beyond that range, you know, it will provide improper results. So here this function will take one parameter and that parameter is the number for which we want to find the factorial and I'm going to say n, you know, we can give any name. Now here we are going to write this function in such a way that it will make recursive calls to find the factorial of a number in a recursive function. We should have a condition where the recursive call should end at some point. If we don't have a condition where the recursive call will end, then your program will not work. It will crash. So here the condition to find the factorial is if the number is one or zero, then the factorial is one. So there is no point beyond that, you know, uh, lower than that where, can, where we can find the factorial. So, so here if n contains a value one or less than zero, then we will return one. So if we will write that condition. We will check the value present in the n variable, whether n is containing a value less than or equal to one. In that case, what we write is we will write return one. Now here, let's say if this n is not one, then what we have to do, we have to find the factorial of this number n. So we know that n factorial is actually equal to n multiplied by n minus one factorial. Like the way I have uh, said before, four factorial is equal to four multiplied by three factorial. Then this three factorial is equal to three multiplied by two factorial. Two factorial is equal to two multiplied by one factorial and one factorial is equal to one. So the recursive call will end when we reach one in here. What we're going to do is if n is containing a value greater than one, then we want to return n multiplied by factorial of n minus one. Now here what happens? If n is greater than one, then we want to perform n multiplied by the factorial of the n minus one. So here we are calling this function factorial and we are trying to find the factorial of the number. 
So what we are doing here is we are multiplying n with whatever the factorial of the n minus 1. Now let's write the main function and after that I'm going to explain how this works. So here in the main function let us declare the variables that we are going to use. The one variable that we need is for storing the number entered by the user for finding the factorial and I'm going to call it as number and if you want we can use another variable to store the result calculated from this factorial and if you want we can eliminate that one also but I'm going to use it so we're going to say result and uh, after that I'm going to use the printf function and I will say enter the non-negative number and then we will use the scanf function and we will read the number entered by the user and we will store that in our number variable and after that what we do is we will call the factorial function and we will get the factorial value so we will call the factorial function like this factorial and the number that we want to pass for this function is present in this number variable which is the value entered by the user and once we get the result we will store that in the result variable okay now the last thing that we do is we will print out the factorial value that we get. So I'm going to use the printf function in here and I'm going to say percentage %d factorial is equal to percentage %d and here we will have number and result. Now here let us say the user is going to enter the number 4. So the number will be 4. Now here we are calling this function factorial and we are passing 4. So this factorial function will get 4. I'll write fact for factorial and we will get fact equal fact 4. Now first this condition is checked whether n is containing a value less than or equal to 1. No, n is containing 4. So this uh, return statement will not be executed. Then we come to this part and, we, and here we have return n multiplied by factorial of n minus 1. So it will be like return 4 n is containing 4 multiplied by factorial of 3. Now again we are calling this factorial function and with a value of 3. So again this factorial function will be called and this time with 3. Again this if condition will fail because 3 is not less than or equal to 1. So we come here and we will perform 3 multiplied by factorial of 2. Now again we come to the factorial function and this time with a value of 2. Again this condition will fail. 2 is not less than or equal to 1. So, so here we will have return 2 multiplied by factorial of 1. Now we come to factorial of 1 and this time this condition will be true and it will return 1. So factorial of 1 will return 1. To whom? It will return to the caller of this factorial of 1 which is this factorial of 2. So here it will be 2 multiplied by 1 and this function factorial of 2 will return this value which is 2 to its caller which is factorial of 3. So it will be 3 multiplied by and this is 2. So it will return 6 to its caller which is factorial of 4. So here we have 4 multiplied by factorial of 3 which is 6 and we get the output as 24 and uh, after that the 24 will be stored in this result variable and we are printing that to the screen here. So now I have written printf should have written printf I'm going to correct that and I have made another mistake in here and that is I need to add the ampersand symbol for this number variable. So we will add that and after that save this program and let's run this. Enter the non-negative number. I'm going to enter 4 and it says 4 factorial equal to 24. Uh, now I want you to modify this program. Here we are not checking whether the user is entering the negative integer or not. Here we are stating that enter the non-negative number. But what, what happens if the user is going to enter the negative number? So I want you to have a check in here in this main function. So modify this program and uh, write that in the comment box. So this is it guys for this video. Thank you for watching. If you like it, hit the like button. If you don't like it, hit the dislike button. If you want to say something, write that in the comment box. 
for more tutorials like this do subscribe to the channel thank you for watching i'll meet you later in the next video